might be saying to yourself, hey, mother father, you need to get your own prize pick intro. I don't disagree, but I'm telling you, those things are a fucking pain in the ass. So we're going to we're gonna double down on the showdown hoedown, because between the music and the graphic and all that shit, I, I spent way too much money on it. There's the fact of the day. What's up, guys? We're back for the prize pick show, even though I got the showdown hoedown intro. And yes, I got the COVID. I got COVID, but I'm still here. Still got to do my prize pick show, because if you can't be consistent, you can't be nothing in this industry. So I'm here. I might have some snot running down my face mid-show. Deal with it, mother father. Deal with it. It's called water snot. It happens to the best of us. Uh, I hope a lot of you are finding my channel for the first time. This prize pick uh, part of my station I'm trying to grow. It's not near as big as the PGA DFS, which I normally do. So we're trying to grow this prize pick part. I've made three shows. All three of them have led to massive wins. I'm not promising you that I want to keep shooting 90% on prize picks. But shit, if I keep doing it, maybe I should. What you really want to know is that I am the Degenerate75. You can find me on uh twitter you see it right down, down there below me go ahead if you like this channel give this channel a subscribe uh follow me on twitter and uh help help me grow the brand help me grow the brand brother uh what we're going to be doing here is looking at some plus ev plays on prize picks you're going to make your own picks i ain't going to give them to you if you want me to give you picks well i don't do that here however i did start a patreon today you see it right there above my shoulder yeah that's my new patreon uh, mainly it's because people, you know, like I, I try not to big dog anybody and blow anybody off. And when you do that, uh, you know, a lot of people watch my channel. A lot of people like the advice I give. They know I'm fairly knowledgeable about this shit. And I end up spreading myself a little too thin. So what I decided to do is to give these people the proper time and respect and uh, time that they need to get better at these things. I have made a Patreon for you to join. And I've got different levels here for whatever you want. If you just want the basic stuff, just want to be part of the, hear the rumors and stuff uh, going on in the general uh, chat. See the model categories that I'm looking at for my stats. You want to see access to my exposure sheet. You can see right there. That's just the level one. The level two, you get some more stuff. I'll break down the good and the bad chalk. You'll get a specialized showdown video where I tell you the plays that I really like. Uh, and then um, uh, you, you, you're also going to get, uh, you know, uh, the stuff from the previous tiers. But the big one is the, the VIP one over here. You're going to get my full player, uh, my full models uh, results. You're going to get one-on-one -on -one coaching, private uh, Discord chat, uh, voice chat, and stuff like that. My full ownership projections for all 156, my price pick selections, all of that stuff. So if that's what you're doing, if I've won you a lot of money, you just want to support me, there you go. Patreon. It'll be in the description of this video. Uh, if you're like, I don't want to pay for that stuff. I like my stuff free. Well, then don't join, mother father. I don't care. It's fine. You can. This video is going nowhere. I'll still come here, make these videos, and you can still enjoy me. And maybe I will make you laugh or give you a good pick or two. But it could just be from the water snot rolling down my face. I'm not sure. So uh, this is just if you want to support. It's all right. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't sign up, brother. Just uh, I wanted to have it there for people that want uh, a little bit more. And that's what it is. That's what it is. Because, uh, you know, like time is money. And I give a whole bunch of fucking time to this stuff. All right. We are not fucking around. We're not fucking around. So let's get going. Uh, some things to take away. Uh, first of all, let's go look at the course. How's the course playing? Hopefully you've already watched the showdown hoedown because you're doing some PGA DFS. Uh, and if you are doing that, you should know we've already looked at the course and it ain't playing easy home skillet. It played two shots over par the first day, which is really misleading. Cause if you go look at the split breakdown, they got fucking annihilated in the afternoon. Uh, and then today it played two and a half shots over par. Now I am seeing for tomorrow, the wind looks, you know, comparable to today, probably not quite as bad. But they have it consistently at 18 miles an hour, uh, getting up to 20 to 21 in the afternoon when the leaders are out there. But the gusts aren't as heavy. So I do think there will be slightly better conditions tomorrow, especially when we go look at one more than one source because we're fucking adults. Uh, we are seeing that they uh, over here on the weather channel. I've heard they do weather. Uh, they have it only going up to about 15 miles an hour. So if it really does peak at 15 mile an hour constant winds, that's definitely a uh, reprieve from what the players saw today. Um, I, I still think it's going to be, I would guess, 1.75 probably maybe uh, we'll just I'll, I'll hedge 1.5 to two shots over part of that's my guess i don't think it's going to be super easy uh but i also don't think it's going to be brutal like it was uh what was that thursday afternoon 
So uh, let's just get going here. The first thing I just want to talk about is I really, uh, I make my bread and butter playing greens and regulation. That's the biggest place to exploit the weaknesses of prize picks uh, and where they are putting out soft numbers and stuff. Excuse me. Need a drink of coffee. I've got the sore throat because I got the Rona. All right. So why I don't like birdies or better matchup. It's just fucking arbitrary. It's hard to have a big expected value whenever it is a 1v1 and birdies. It's not even strokes. Like if you just said John Rom versus Maverick McNeely tomorrow and strokes, well, sure, John Rom's probably like, a, yeah, I would guess at least 60-40 to win that, right? But it's not strokes. It's birdie or better. Maverick McNeely could have nine bogeys tomorrow and five birdies, and John Rom could have four birdies and no bogeys, and Maverick McNeely beats him. I just, I don't like it. I just think most of these are not great plays. You know, like if you're a fucking degenerate and you just need one to bet, I would kind of like Sam Burns over Keith Mitchell. I think Sam Burns is uh, a way better player. Sam Burns goes off early in the morning and Keith Mitchell is doing all of his uh, damage with a flat stick. But uh, you want to know the truth? I wouldn't fucking do it, Bob. I wouldn't do it. That's, that's, there's your answer. There's your answer. I don't like him. I don't like him. I'm not going to play him. You play him if you want. It's your world. I ain't giving you picks. Unless you sign up for my Patreon, then I'll give you some picks, you mother father. All right. What I really like is the birdies are better. Uh, when you're looking at birdies are better, you want to be strategic about this, right? Like, let's go look at today. There was only one, two, three four holes that were playing under par. Obviously the three par fives and that shorter par four uh, 13th. Those are the only ones playing under par. So there's not a lot of gettable holes, right? And even the ones that are gettable are like barely under par. But if we're saying it's playing a little bit easier tomorrow, you know, let's just say a good half a stroke to three quarters of a stroke easier tomorrow, then we definitely got to consider that like, I think three birdies is a really good number. If if I, I, I think an average golfer playing average tomorrow will be able to get three birdies. I feel like that's a pretty safe bet. I was really pr praying that prize picks would be stupid and would overreact to these first two days and put everybody at 2.5 and I was going to bet my left kidney on it but they didn't they put out some pretty sure well, I don't know about pretty sharp I think they're a little soft but they didn't give us any home runs you go look at round one uh, when it was a little bit easier there was one two three four five six holes playing under par so if you're thinking that it's going to play a little bit easier like it did on Thursday but you gotta remember that's mainly because of the morning wave from Thursday uh, then maybe there's six holes that play under par. If there's six holes playing under par tomorrow, you got to think three birdies is attainable by almost any slap dick, right? I mean, you could accidentally make three birdies. So uh, that's something to consider. So you read the win the way you want. I, I've, I've kind of read it my way. I've seen some other people reading it the other way. And let's be real. It's fucking weather in Scotland. We're all just making educated guesses. So you pick your lane. You make Yelp picks. But I will tell you, if you think that win's not going to come in as hard as it's been the last two days, well, then you should definitely be playing the over on all of these birdies. Uh, what are these birdie numbers? Well, let's go check them out. Always scroll down here to the bottom. The best value, you always want to go look at the guys with the fewest birdies, okay? I know you're seeing, oh, Joe Rom, Fitzpatrick, and Xander, they're all so good. Man, I don't give a shit how good they are. I will always take an inferior player to a superior player when they've got to make one full less birdie. Okay, I don't like Ricky Fowler. I think Ricky Fowler sucks. But like, is Ricky Fowler a full birdie worse than Matthew Fitzpatrick, Xander Schauffele, or John Rahm? Not in the world I live in. Three birdies for Ricky. Three birdies for Kucher. Uh, that's all they got to do to win. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. Um, the, the, those are plus EV plays right there. Uh, especially if you buy the narrative that the course is going to play a little bit easier tomorrow. I'm not selling you that narrative. You got to do your own damn research. I'm telling you what to look at and how to make your own decisions. That's what I do here. I don't give you picks. I teach you the process and how I come up with these plus EV plays. You're going to, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm just going to teach you how to fish mother father. Uh, all right. So I really like those. Um, these ones right here that are three, these are really interesting because these almost seem like locks for a push at minimum, right? And you're getting a higher tier player. You've got Gary Woodland, Tommy Fleetwood, and Tringali all at three birdies or better. Well, let me tell you about all three of them. First of all, Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy Fleetwood is kind of just living off of his putter. Let me go make sure I'm not bullshitting you. Let's go look at Mr. Fleetwood. Uh, Fleetwood, Fleetwood... I don't even have the right thing up. Fleetwood, where you at, mother father? Mr. Fleetwood right here is gaining off the tee, losing on approach, gaining with the putter. Don't love that. 
but you know he's a pretty good player so i would think tommy fleetwood you know he's probably the safest of these the reason that i'm concerned about woodland and tringali at three is well first of all tringali is a fucking loser and he's in first place you think he's not going to be nervous get the fuck out of here uh he'll be nervous i don't like that but here's something that we really want to pay attention to uh this is the analysis you want to be putting into this stuff go look at the holes uh the after go search by waves round one a full three shots harder in the afternoon you said yeah that was close to the wind okay well let's go look at today when the wind was much more constant all day well still one and a half shot difference the afternoons are going to play more difficult than the mornings simply because it gets crustier there it gets harder to land the ball the ball doesn't stick it rolls off and now you've got really tough chips around the green so because of that, I don't like guys going off late in the afternoon. I think it gets really hard to throw darts. It gets really hard to have any real looks at birdie. Uh, and it puts a tremendous amount of stress on your short game. And, you know, like I, I can just see some guys imploding tomorrow because of that. So I, regardless of how much you think the wind is going to be up, I think it's undeniable that the best scoring conditions will be for the guys going out earliest. I just I think that's a, an undeniable fact. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I fucking doubt it. Uh, okay. Okay. Back to prize picks. So Tringale uh, and Gary are both going off late. That's the only concern I have with them. That's why I don't think they're quite as good of plays as Kutcher and Fowler, who only have to get three to win. Woodland and Tringale have to get four to win. But I will say they've each gotten over four birdies in both of their first two rounds. Um, but, you know, Woodland's kind of relying on that flat stick. Don't love that. Speaking of flat stick, man, have you watched Jordan Spieth stand over a four-footer and not been nervous as hell? Have you? Because I'm telling you, like, he is, he's got the yips or something. It looks like it's like every time he, like, watches it all the way to the cup and almost thinks it's going to miss even when it goes in. It's it's tough. Um, I just don't know if I can do Spieth. If I had to bet two guys to get the 3.5 you're probably thinking xander because he's ball striking so well you probably think i'm going to say fitzpatrick because he's a god at links and he's playing so well he's a u.s open champion john rom because he says fuck a lot and they have to bleep him and then the guys on the tv have to apologize yeah the answer is no to all of those to me the two best guys for 3.5 over 3.5 birdies which by the way i don't love because four birdies is certainly no uh you know is, is certainly no lock i would say four birdies from these guys is about a 60 to 65 percent likelihood of happening and the reason i say that is these are two world class talents they're both gonna be out early in the best scoring conditions and they're both guys that like they even when their round is shitty you know, they could shoot an eight over tomorrow and still get four birdies. They're just dudes that score. Like, let's just face it. And when you're going for birdies or better, I don't care if they shoot a 78. Just go give me four birdies, mother father. So Burns and Smith would be the two that I would look at the heaviest. Am I telling you to play all these guys? No, I don't fucking care who you play. You play whoever you want, dude. Uh, I'm just telling you some good strategy to consider. The last one we're going to look at here is, uh, what are we looking at? Strokes. I got to tell you, strokes. A lot of these guys being set at even par, you know, Fitzpatrick and Xander, uh, yes, they look like God. They're, to me, they're too scary to, to take on. Uh, Xander is losing strokes putting, uh, and he is still fourth in this tournament. He's just too scary. Uh, John Rahm is showing some nice chops putting and around the green. But what, you know, like, the guys I would be looking at is Cantley at 70.5. Man, if I think this course is going to play 1.5 to 2 over, and you may think differently, and if you think differently, make your own fucking picks. But what I'm saying, if I think the course is going to play 1.5 to 2 over, Patrick Cantlay is not a guy that I want to be playing. Let's go check out Mr. Cantlay. Getting it all done. I mean all done with around the green and putting. His ball striking sucks. Now, Patrick Cantlay is an amazing golfer. He might turn it on tomorrow and go light this course on fire. I'm just saying the odds are I don't think you will. And I, if the course is going to play two strokes over, and I think he's playing very average this week, well, then I have him down for getting at least a 72. And if he's going to get a 72, I would take the over there. I would think that's the plus EV play. Uh, some of these other guys to consider, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I really, I don't know. It, on the overs and the unders, you need to make up your mind about the wind. I would honestly be on Windfinder uh, Weather Channel. If there's any other good weather stations you know, check them and keep updating. And don't lock in your picks until as late as you can. Uh, because if this wind changes, if you check back in six hours and all of a sudden, you know, if you live in America especially, we can stay up till midnight and be checking this shit. And it'll be, what, six in the morning over there or something, right? and we see that the winds get really blustery or they just die down, well, then you need to be using that um, to, to, 
to um, you know make the most educated picks. So that's what I would tell you. Uh, also, I don't. If you're worried about them changing the lines on you, I just don't think they're losing their ass at the Scottish Open. They're not going to be moving lines very much. They've set some pretty fair lines, so I wouldn't worry about the lines changing on you. Um, you know, th- that's what it would do. Well, I'll, leave, I'll say once again, if you want my picks, if you want to see the card I'll be playing tonight, which, by the way, will probably only be uh, about five picks. But more than that, I'll give you some coaching on how to make the best parlays. You know, a lot of people just do like the five, you know, the four team power play. You know, I, I can coach you on the best EV plays on how to make the best parlays to win in the long term. Uh, I've only been doing price picks for four weeks. Uh, I've been literally smashing it. I mean, like a ridiculous amount of money. Um, uh, so, uh I can share that with you. That's what I do on the Discord. You'll have private chat with me, uh, all the stuff you need to be successful, and I'll post my picks. Uh, If that interests you, you'll find the link in the description. Uh, I think that's all I got for you today. Go check out the Showdown Hoedown. It's every Friday and Saturday night, and be on my live stream for PGA DFS Wednesday. I'm not going to say a time because they're over on the other fucking continent, and I don't know what time I'm doing it yet. I'll probably put a poll out. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you being here. I'll be back tomorrow. I make these videos on the reg. You can count on me. You know if I do it when I got COVID, you know I'll do it anytime. I did it from Las Vegas, dude. All right, man. I hope you enjoy my outro. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.